Hello there and welcome back to the Agostino Zynga show with me your host Agostino Zynga and this is episode number 449 that is 449 with me your host Agostino Zynga how are you guys doing how are you guys feeling great amazing good to know if it's your first time check out the show via youtube you know what to do smash that like button hit subscribe leave me a comment down below that'd be greatly appreciated and if you're listening via the podcast app a five star review to share will also go a long way to help spread the show and as per usual support for your patrons always more than welcome at patreon.com fortress agostino join the patreon now for little as one dollar per month to get a free bonus episode only on Patreon only for my Patreon subscribers you get a bonus episode of the Excellent Zynga Show available via Patreon sign up on there today do not delay at patreon.com Fortress Agostino get involved there one bonus episode per week minimum get involved maybe some more coming on down the line but just get involved for now at patreon.com Fortress Agostino Oof, how are you guys doing good I hope you're well wherever you may be Um, I'm feeling somewhat tired somewhat somewhat uh, strained achy no i'm not strained i feel achy that's why i feel i feel achy so this has been what so far this is the third day so i'm recording this on a wednesday now so this is the third day of going to the gym back to back days and kind of you know essentially working out and getting back into the swing of things and i've got to say man god damn it it feels difficult and um this is probably another reminder why I'm definitely not going to do this again. I'm not going to allow myself to just like be sedentary. Of course, I've got the excuse of COVID and the lockdown and stuff, but I pretty much did take my foot off the pedal. I didn't buy a kettlebell. I didn't really do many home workouts. I ran a couple of times, but I wasn't really on top of it. But this is the last time I do this, man, because I don't want to have to go back to this again. It's so difficult moving your body when you've got extra fat that you need to kind of get rid of first. It just feels difficult. Everything feels cumbersome everything feels slow you just feel lethargic nothing works as well as it should do it's just annoying right do you know what I mean so people are, which is probably explains why a lot of people who are bigger don't go to the gym in the first place because it's just so difficult to get going when you're big because you just feel horrible you feel like you're just not moving correctly you feel like you're you look like an absolute idiot, which you don't, because obviously you're doing the great thing by even being in the gym in the first place. But you've got so much self-speak in your head that it just, you know, it puts you off. And usually, I don't know why it is about humans when it comes to working out. Humans can somehow, we're like, yeah, humans can't necessarily, we, got, we, we don't have really have a good way of kind of judging time. So when we go to the gym and you're unfit and you see someone really fit, you immediately start feeling bad about yourself but then you have no idea how long it took that person to look like that, right? You're just immediately judging yourself, like, based upon what that person looks like when you don't know, you know, if this person is a flipping, you know, uh, a junior-level professional flipping athlete or some shit, right? Or who's been training for the majority of their adult life or, you know, started doing this stuff on a five or has been committed for a year and a half, whatever, right? You don't really judge in the same way. I'm not too sure what that is about humans that do that. We just don't have a way of kind of accurately placing where we are in terms of the goals we're trying to achieve which probably again like i said explains why people who are bigger probably just don't tend to go to gym in the first place because it's just annoying All right fair enough i think most people probably don't like going to gym anyway because it's a bit of a chore you have to go get clothes on you know sweat people some people don't like to put themselves you know in uncomfortable positions which again is a bit frightening considering how you know perfect not perfect considering how easy life is in the modern world people you know going out of their way to not add extra stress and strain on themselves is a bit bizarre you'd imagine you'd want some kind of you know that's why I probably now as well the older that I've got is the more I understand now why some guys go to like power league and you know get into fist fights you know playing five aside games and stuff some of it is obviously just neanderthal behavior but some of it is just like a necessary need for men or human beings to just go out there and kind of you know let loose and kind of you know take out your frustration or just you know whatever run around the pitch a little bit and get a bit flustered get pushed into the side of the cage whatever it kind of brings you back to life again um so I, c I can only imagine what it must be like for somebody that's like actively trying not to get involved in anything that's going to strain or push them to um some sort of cardiovascular or physical you know risk or something uh, who do i think of that that's christopher ryan in the right transcendently speaking christopher ryan who read the book called sex at dawn that's probably why he's one of the people who i'm a big fan of don't get me wrong but it's pretty difficult sometimes to listen to his podcast because 
he's got a really it's a really good one anyway it's called tangentially speaking tangentially speaking sorry i'll say that clearly and what he usually does is that whenever he's traveling around because he's basically like a who did describe him like a traveling nomadic philosopher or something right um like i said he read that legendary book called sex at dawn which essentially was meant to break all the you know societal taboos that we have around sex and relationships and he kind of got really famous up for that that had been on he's been on joe rogan a few times but i find it hard sometimes to listen to his podcast because he's so at odds with how i live my life like he's you know he kind of goes out of his way to seek comfort in all areas of his life he doesn't ever want to be strained or pushed into doing something that might you know bring him some level of stress he just wants to live a life of complete comfort and it's interesting too because he does it the opposite way he's not like he's you know living in a white marble mansion somewhere looking like dj khaled he just does it like bare bones right he's got an rv or a van a bike whatever i'm not sure what he's using to travel around um and you know he get, i think he's got his mum helping him out doing the merch like he's like really really minimal right he's really really minimal so that's really admirable in that way but sometimes when i hear him talk about you you know making sure he doesn't have any extra stresses on his life so he can just focus on doing what he loves like you know reading writing and connecting with people it's a bit like i don't know man i, I, I can't have that life i need to kind of part of my functioning mechanism is being busy which is odd really because i wouldn't say i'm a workaholic by that you know i wouldn't really say that because i think most companies i've been at especially the last few people would say i probably put the least amount of effort in so i don't really think that's the case i just i don't know what it is man but i just need to be busy i need to have things on the go right that's probably why I'm, you know lockdown has probably affected me more than i thought it would have now we're coming out of it and things are getting better but i think that's probably why because i need to have these things to bounce off of in order for me to kind of be able to like you know really feel like i'm doing something or oh, and it, and i feel like i think each thing that i do kind of gives the next thing a bit of momentum a little bit of a push it's all this weird kinetic energy vibe right so doop, 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 little dominoes falling over fall, falling on top of each other right one into the other and that kind of you know gives you the energy to do the next thing the next thing the next thing but again people are just wired differently anyway. but anyway gym wise update like i mentioned um stresses and strains body's feeling achy you know getting back into it long but i'm happy i'm in there um, good to just be in a gym you know pushing weights around having some you know building up the calluses back of my hands and stuff like just awesome awesome you really really um i really took that stuff for granted things that you probably you know for all, they're always going to be around here for you but glad it's back and just considering and it just to consider how wild it was anyway right to be in lockdown with this viral virus going around respiratory virus sorry that is you know essentially wreaking havoc on you know the majority of the world but then they close gyms the one thing that could probably get, give allow you some sort of solace whether it be physical or mental and just in terms of providing people a bit of escape right getting them in peak physical condition or keeping them in peak physical conditioning because what i've seen so far on social it's either people who had access to private gyms look amazing right as Majid jordan bad bunny of course who's doing his wrestling a few other people have come out of glock that look amazing or you just look like shit because you've not been doing anything there's no in between <laughs> that's the issue i think that's what i would have done that would have been perfect if i had a little garage gym during the whole time but you know it's needs must we are where we are anyway we've got a jam pack show for you today loads of things to get involved in so get yourself a little drink a little snack whatever it is that you may like and we're gonna just jump right on in so first things first to get involved in um congratulations are in order for burt kreischer comedian burt kreischer has secured has got himself a movie a feature film he's spoken about it a few times on his podcast i think he's you know he's kind of always given me the impression that as much as he kind of loves to i wouldn't say he actually gets no he, he's not one of those guys that says he always hates hollywood but he you know he's one of those guys that maybe believes you know he's his own bullshit sometimes in terms of how popular the podcasts are and the fact that they, they don't need the industry and all that malarkey but still i think the fact that you know um but it's but and you know i wouldn't be surprised that he was deep down he's burned his eyes always been no i think no i do remember that's 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 it i take it back i do remember a few shows but always saying that his dream is to have like a a one cam sitcom or something right 
um, to kind of centered around his life, of course. And he's always said if he does get into acting, he really would like to get into acting, but he can't because he feels like he can only play himself, which makes sense, isn't it? Um, you don't really see him having the range to play a whole host of characters. So um, this is courtesy of Hollywood Reporter. It says the following, Mark Hamill, comedian Burt Crash, is a star in The Machine for Legendary. Pretty decent, right? The project is based off Crash's viral story. As you can see here, that's a screenshot from um, The Machine, aka The Russian Mafia story that was basically the prelude to but basically popping and becoming one of the you know biggest selling comedians out there in america obviously joe rogan helped a lot with that as well by telling him you know to actually to do the do the um tell the story him taking on tour him deciding to clip it and upload it. i think if i'm not mistaken it got popping off of facebook and then from there it just became a whole another thing and he kind of built off the back of that so that's pretty decent and that also might have been his debut of talking about the show of doing stand up without the show on I'm not too sure if I'm, if I'm being incorrect there, but let's continue here. It says Mark Hamill is helping bring the viral hit to screen. The Star Wars actor will star opposite comedian Burt Kreischer in The Machine, legendary adaptation of the popular story Burt Kreischer told on stage about getting involved with the Russian mob while studying abroad in college. Peter Atencio, known for the Key and Peele and Keanu is directing. That's pretty decent. That's a score and a half. The director for Key and Peele is doing it. So definitely have a good little vibe about it. The only thing that's odd is that um, supposedly Mark Hamill, um, aka, um, sorry, aka, Mark Hamill is essentially playing Burt Kreischer's dad in this movie, which is odd considering they kind of look like they're probably in the same age range bracket. Maybe there's 10 years separating them, maybe 20. But it's not enough for them to be a father and son, you'd imagine, right? But, you know, needs must. And I'm sure they're going to do some you know after effects to make it work it continues crash's 2016 story has been viewed more than 85 million times according to legendary i guess that's all platforms right because uh you know they love to do that sort of stuff and collate all the numbers but that's still insane in it imagine that one that, which is what i think someone like gary v always says right you have to kind of always be ready content wise so you don't know what's going to pop you kind of have to treat your content like how musicians and artists have to treat their singles right you're always kind of thinking you're always going into each song that you make with the idea that oh this could be the one that pops so that you have other things also in the in the kind of chamber in case that is the one that pops so that you can boom 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 drop 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 after 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 right and i guess that's the same thing with this like um but crash probably had a whole host of material he might have said this story a million times it might be part of his old bits he's already touring new stuff he's got loads of content already in the chamber because again he's a uh, really good at marketing and stuff when it comes to com stand-up comedy then that pops and then you've got a whole bevy of content you can kind of throw out there so it's a great result it continues the film is inspired by the stand-up comedians uh stand-up comedy routine that sees the events of a story that catch up with the comedian 20 years later when he and his father hamill get kidnapped by the people that kershaw wronged the film is described as the hangover meets midnight run um was filmed in serbia kershaw and judy mano are producing um hamill known for his work as luke skywalker in the star wars galaxy can currently be heard as a voice in amazon's invincible he is read by the gersh agency and kleinberg Cuddy and carlo crash is read by levity live uta and J jeff edelick so big result man again the, the, for people that are fans of his that might be a good sign because that might mean we we finally stop hearing him mention the machine and you know the russian mafia story completely who knows probably not knowing this but but still a good look for him bro. regardless I, i'm pretty sure he's definitely going to be happy to have this to be able to have two you know one foot in the hollywood machine and one foot doing his own content that's pretty decent you know the marketing materials for this is going to be insane he's probably going to be you know touring this on all the podcasts when it comes out so it's going to be an unbearable 18 months when this does come out afterwards or even just around the same period it's being filmed but again i don't think it could happen to a a more hard working dude all in all again like i said I, although i find him sometimes a little bit insufferable <clears throat> on podcasts sometimes i still think overall in terms of working hard putting out loads of good content being really funny as well you know which is something that you have to kind of give him credit for he does probably go on a lot about counterculture bent up to just being a generally funny dude but crash is definitely up there so congratulations to him on securing that film deal we move on we move on what else do we have here should we kind of soften the blow before we go let's go straight in no lube who cares so this is courtesy of the new york times a kind of update on the unfortunate passing of 
uh, Duante Wright, I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure you pronounce his name. So the good news is concerning this, the officer that was involved in the shooting of Duante Wright has resigned as did the chief of police. I mentioned this previously in another episode that I was, of course, upset about the passing of Duante Wright and you know, thoughts and feelings go out to his family. But I was also just couldn't understand why in this instance why the officer was put on administrative leave which essentially would mean should get paid whilst um the invest whilst the incident was being investigated um when you consider how egregious the whole incident was and also when you consider the proximity of what happened there to what's happened what happened earlier um or what happened last year with george floyd in minnesota um just in terms of bad pr they should have just you know unfortunately made the police officer be a sacrificial lamb and kind of just booed her out and kind of got moving the fact that the police chief had to come up in front of the press and have that car crash interview that didn't make him look too great because i guess he was just probably taken aback about the situation didn't know what to say and didn't really um give a good account of himself or his leadership or yeah uh, yeah or leadership or the team that he was kind of obviously um leading there in that police force and then of course the woman herself you know she have just probably just handed in her badge as soon as that kid drove away or as soon as it was kind of confirmed the kid was not alive anymore um but you know uh it didn't happen at that time it still happened anyway regardless so i can't be begrudging that and it is just quite a little bit of a it does provide a little bit of respite not obviously a lot because still somebody's lost their son father brother sister best friend through just pure stupidity but at least we have some precedent being set for a police person, a police officer for the most part, taking responsibility and saying, hey, I made a mistake, which was obviously fatal, but I'm taking ownership for it. I'm re I'm kind of resigning and going from there, which was obviously good to see in that regard, but still probably a little bit too late. We continue here. So it says here, um, Kim Porter, the police officer in Brooklyn Center, Minnesota, who fatally shot Duante Wright on Sunday, has resigned from the police department. Her union said um, in a statement on Tuesday, uh, the city's police chief, Tim Gannon, also announced that he was departing. In a letter that Miss Porter sent to city officials on Tuesday, she said that she was resigning immediately, the union said. She said the following, I have loved every minute of being a police officer and serving the community to the best of my ability, but I believe it is the best interest of the community and department and my fellow officers if I resign immediately for sure because imagine she's probably putting everyone else at risk as well isn't it if she stays in the force you never know what people are going to do in terms of you know assaulting police officers that they see in the street you know fire bombing the flipping station itself like people are insane when it comes to this sort of stuff in the states which understandably so but it definitely if you if you're kind of looking out for your friends and not just yourself then it probably makes sense to do this um, it continues the union law enforcement service labor services represents more than 6,400 members throughout Minnesota Miss Porter 48 had been an officer with the Brooklyn Center Police for 26 years now fair enough right the, the details I'm not too sh sure on I'm not too sure if she actually had a taser that was yellow because everything I'm seeing online people are saying oh how can you not tell the difference between a handgun that's black and a taser that's yellow and they're both really different in terms of shape right even in grip of the handle you could tell which was which just by a little just glance or just by a little just touch you could tell so i'm not too sure if that's the case but even if they were the same color even if one was you know un in her sock being a police officer of 26 years i would just assume you've learned some things and you gleaned some things and you've did developed a keen sort of sixth sense of stuff that occurs around you right you can tell if who's shady who's shifty who needs to be investigated who needs to be pulled over um where's my stuff where's my taser where's my gun you should be able to do that and the fact that she didn't i would i would argue it's probably clear evidence that this probably isn't the first time you look her through a record i'm pretty sure she has other instances in her career as a police officer where she's kind of made a very clumsy and uh idiotic mistake for somebody as experienced as her for sure this doesn't just happen out of the blue it's impossible i refuse to believe it um 26 year veteran cop and you just suddenly mistaken um you know which uh weapon to pull out of to pull out from your waistband when you want to stop somebody it just doesn't make any sense it continues she said she first um she she was the first licensed as a police officer in minnesota in 1995 and graduated from the saint mary college in winner in winona minnesota 994 where the criminal justice mayor schools official said um or major sorry 
Until her resignation, she had been placed on administrative leave within the Department of the Shooting of the Right 20. Um, in a news conference on Monday, Chief Gannon said he believed that Miss watching Miss body cam footage that she was attempting to use a taser on Miss Wright and pulled her fire and said killing him. Bloody insane, isn't it? And, you know, just to kind of gratify the whole thing, we've obviously got a picture of her on the mugshot there. And <clears throat> I don't know, man. I, maybe because I'm getting older and I've just got a heart. I don't get any glee from this. I think everybody's lives and this has been completely uh, irre irre irrevocably, whatever it's been called, irreversibly changed for the worst, right? Um, 26 year veteran officer who's probably been able to scoot along being mediocre and not being that great of a job. Suddenly your life gets turned upside down. Suddenly everyone attached to you has also got their life upside down. The family of the victim, it's just, you know, distra distraught to think about, especially when you think, of the stories about you know Dante Wright's mum calling him when he was getting pulled over and then having some sort of argument or back and forth about him not running it's just heartbreaking stuff for everybody involved this is a complete shit show and again the heart of the issue is of course Dante Wright shouldn't have ran that's the first thing if he wouldn't have ran this probably would have never happened but still there needs to be a conversation around how police do their job in the states there has to be a conversation around that there needs to be how these guys do their jobs in the states is just it's just insane that there's so many bad ones right that's the issue everyone's always oh, with one bad apple whatever okay cool well however many bad apples you are there's too many especially when it comes to um using flipping deadly force that's the thing that's really odd because it's one thing if they in you know in incorrectly ar arrest you for a crime because you look like somebody that they're sort of on the lookout for that's one thing right i don't know mistakes happen but for it to come into a situation where they're trying to arrest you for that, you know, alleged assault, whatever it is, that they've mistaken you to be the guy, to be the perpetrator for, you make some wrong move because you're nervous and you, you've seen all the, what you've seen on social with people dying at the hands of police officers and you're like, white and black, wherever they are, you get nervous and you, you flinch. Suddenly that could be your life gone completely because they don't shoot to, they don't shoot to wound, they don't shoot to disable, they shoot to kill. For the most part and i guess that's the rules in the rule book right they always have they always kind of aim for center mass never in the leg elbow shoulder whatever it's always center mass just to take you completely out um yeah i don't know man i don't know but again good news in that regard that kim, that kim porter resigned of her own volition which again is something i was pushing for when i first heard this story and now she's being charged with second degree manslaughter which probably is an, a, a charge that i'll probably end up sticking and even if, even if it doesn't they're probably going to end up throwing under the bus because, you know, of the how fought the situation is in the States, especially if what you are led to believe is true from people in the know with the George Floyd case uh, that allegedly um, Derek Chauvin might end up getting off and not being charged um, at all for the murder of George Floyd, which would be absolutely insane if that happens. But if that does happen, unfortunately, Kim Paul will have to be the second, Kim Potter, Kim Potter, not Porter, Kim Potter will have to be the sacrificial lamb and she'll definitely get thrown under the bus and some. Um, if it comes to that conclusion but hey what can you do what can you do next on this we've got this really f interesting story here from courtesy of cbaca i'm assuming this is a canadian place right so this is something that got me thinking about my times at work and how resistant i was to certain things but now that i've gotten older i've kind of realized depending on your goals and what you're trying to achieve sometimes going the extra mile can help so this is courtesy of cbc dot ca it says the following school custodian refuses to download an iphone app that monitors location says it's got her fired right so crazy story so this is the following michelle dion was excited about her new job helping to prevent the spread of covid um by doing extra cleaning in elementary school in darwell a, a outer wherever that is about 85 kilometers west of edmonton um, about last sorry but last October after being on the job for about six weeks her boss at the cleaning company sent out a company-wide message telling employees to download an app on their personal phones that would check their location and ensure that they're working their scheduled hours insane right that the app actually even exists it's insane whoever's made it is probably making millions but that's nuts 
that's definitely an invasion of privacy. It continues. Dion, um, Dion, is that how you pronounce her name? Dion, right? Found the request offensive and refused. She said, I was at the school working so that I could provide for my son, she told Go Public. We're not thieves. We don't need an ankle monitor. Very true. Less than two months later, the single mom was fired. Her refusal to download the app was mentioned in her letter of termination. Just imagine that they can do that. I guess the laws are maybe different in Canada, but imagine they can fire you for not downloading a certain app on your own personal phone. Wild. I guess to some extent they could say, oh, how so? Because it's unlikely. I don't know. Should I say it out loud? Does that make sense saying it out loud? I would assume it's very unlikely that cleaners get company phones, right? I, cause I, but I would assume also if you're, if, you're the, if you're the person that owns a company that hires a fleet of cleaners, how else are you going to get in contact with them if you need to get contact? I guess you, there's no rule you need to like panic rush to call a cleaner that you've hired and sent out on a job or somewhere, right? But there might be an occasion where you might want to call them. So how else would you call them? So it might make more sense to just give them all burners isn't it, that they can use whilst they're on the job. But installing an app that tracks their movement is just wild. It continues. Um, other Canadians have been asked to download a software that helps employees remotely monitor their productivity, such as phone apps that register an employee's location via GPS, software that monitors the activity of their computer mouse, others that tracking devices that, that, that track uh, others have tracking devices in their vehicles, which makes sense. If you have a company car, they're probably going to put the tracking vehicle, the tracking device in there just so they can prevent it from being stolen as opposed to tracking you and you're driving it. But that obviously is a good benefit for them. It continues. It's prompting some employment lawyers go public consulted to sound the alarm. It says tracking of the employees is the beginning of a cautionary tale that might take us to a place that we don't really want to go. So Toronto's employment lawyer, Samai Ray Ellis, we need to take the pause before we go down some paths of being tracked all day, every day, wherever we are going. So very true. But I was thinking about some of my own personal experiences and what I've noticed, especially it really does depend on what you're trying to get out of the job that you're working and you know wherever you you've gone to apply wherever it may be if your ambitions is to maybe go up the ranks and become an area manager maybe a ceo or whatever cto something higher up in terms of you know the executive branch of the company um in the big boardroom all that malarkey maybe you have some you know benefits and uh, perks for being that such high position then you're going to have to sacrifice a little bit of your free time. You're going to have to inconvenience yourself. You're going to have to make yourself readily available at all times, show that you're willing to kind of sweat blood, you know, uh, blood, sweat and tears to make sure that you get that promotion and be a valuable member of the team. It's just one of those things. And I think of every time in my career that I've worked, even especially in retail where I've gone the extra mile, I've stayed a bit longer, I've come a bit earlier, I've not taken so long on my lunch break. Things that I would probably, I would never do now because of the whole, you know, my help, my kind of perspective on work has sort of changed quite drastically since then. But back then, it did get rewarded. It's obviously not the best thing to continue doing if that's not your ambitions. But again, it's mostly about what your goals are. If you want to be the area manager of a store or, you know, of a company, then those things are going to go a long way to helping you get that promotion because it's going to set a good example um to others and it's also going to impress the people who are higher up because they just see you working really diligently um but again for cleaners who are the imagine i don't know how it is in canada but i'd imagine most places where people hire a whole army full of cleaners most of the cleaners are either people that come from you know low economic you know circumstances people with maybe the not so much the uh, not so much of an ideal family situation so to then kind of put them under some sort of active monitoring for what because you're worried what, what like what's what, what are they going to be doing do you know what i mean it just doesn't make any especially cleaning if you didn't do it you didn't do it there's no way to kind of fob the job and if you do you're gonna be quickly gone and there'll be somebody else ready to replace you there's probably got a waiting list of people ready to get on the books of some cleaning company so a very very odd thing but again like i said it's just it really is dependent on what you kind of want to do with your career um, unfortunately sometimes working really hard and around the clock and coming in on weekends really does help to kind of bolster your career options and of course if you want to own your own business maybe having 
the ability to know what that feels like and to be in the trenches with your manager doing something a project you know kind of playing teacher's pet role does have some benefits to it too when you end up starting your own thing so it just is dependent but you know nowadays with everybody complaining about toxic work environments and being un unwilling to kind of work really hard which i understand because working really hard takes a lot of effort and it's difficult and it's not that enjoyable but again um sometimes the smaller fast sacrifices that you make especially in the earlier of your career definitely do go a long way in terms of helping you get to where you want to get to in the end in the end we continue du, 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 du. Let's skip that one for now oh yeah, this is quite hilarious this is courtesy of no jumper allegedly um dj mustard got himself in a bit of a pickle his personal shopper ended up fleecing him for over fifty thousand dollars some people are saying it's, it's i estimate it as to being over a hundred thousand dollars and this kind of went all over the timeline people going crazy over it dj mustard stylist finessed him or personal shopper and then you know then more details started coming out about the case and my perspective completely changed on it actually um now it's looking like it actually might have been dj mustard's fault in the beginning her to begin with with this whole story so this is courtesy of no jumper so dj master claims uh personal shopper stole over fifty thousand dollars and spent it on bags and shoes of course there's a picture of dj mustard looking nice and slim lost a whole bunch of weight there so it's great which is probably why he, he hired um a personal shopper stylist kind of person in the first place right because once you get fit and you start to look good in clothes or you start to look good naked the first thing you want to do is buy yourself a new wardrobe and if you're someone like DJ Mustard and you have the funds to really go ham, you get someone in, get them to buy, I don't know how it would work out, I assume they're just going to pick out loads of stuff based on your budget and then they choose what they want to wear, the rest gets returned and you just kind of, you know, keep recycling and going from there. So it's a pretty decent gig if you all things considered, right? Especially if you end up building a really strong relationship with the artist, they trust you, you trust them you have a good working relationship this could be something that could go on for years and years and you know you know sometimes especially nowadays with everybody wanting to go out of their way to really credit people and show who's in their team that's making them be the person that they're being now in front of the camera there is definitely an option for you too as well to kind of be you know a big star in your own right off the back of this and styling you know a really well-known person and making them look incredible just gonna rub off well on you look at how great steve harvey's looking at the moment he hired that new guy i follow him on instagram what's his name eli or ellie or something like that right um who's friends with laurie harvey and stuff like and look how great that relationship works so it's definitely something that is coveted i'm assuming i would assume again based on what i've read so far um so yeah let's go on the next slide You've got here a screenshot of DJ Mustard kind of getting everyone's attention. Said attention to all my people who know me. I want to bring something to everyone's attention. And he added the girls rather than there. Um, Carissa Walker is a thief and a liar. She's not my stylist. She was a personal shopper for me. And Chanel Dijon. Okay, cool. We let her use a stylist word so she would get more business. But the truth is she did nothing but shop. Which of course is still not a bad thing because I'm assuming... You don't want people to like know that you get dressed by somebody else right you want them to just know hey she goes out and buys us a wardrobe collection of stuff and then we then decide how we're going to put it together i'll assume it continues today i found out that she ran my credit cards for over fifty thousand, buying stuff for herself purses shoes shades and other stuff i'm hot and i'm only writing this so nobody else deals with her she's bad for business have all the receipts to prove everything i paid her more than she was worth because i don't play with taking care of people that do these jobs this is fucking crazy and just wrong next screenshot we've got a receipt here um showing a run-up check i'm assuming of stuff that she probably purchased for herself um monday he said uh, can we hop on a call she said the call because no one else is involved just me to my wrongdoings you really ran okay she that's her saying can you hop on a call you really ran up my card you really crazy he said i'm so sorry truly i'm so sorry should have never got to this point my temptation ran to my attention ran to greed and i'm sorry jesus christ that's when you know you're not coming into this with good intentions anyway right the fact that you have temptations to steal stuff working with a professional client in that kind of atmosphere is just bizarre especially when you consider how close-knit things are especially i would assume in places like california right where they're basically well i'm assuming muscles base i'm assuming is there they are atlanta one or the other they're very close-knit everyone kind of knows everybody um so again if you do a good job or a bad job it's going to be known 
Um, so imagine then going one step further and stealing from your employer, um, especially in this such brazen way. I'm assuming probably most stylists have a thing where they maybe just, you know, add a couple extra things on the list of stuff that they're buying and put it away for themselves, right? Like a little extra things here and there, but not nothing crazy. You don't go and buy a flopping you know um a couple of birkins for yourself right you just maybe you know it, it, when you bought three pairs of shoes you might add a little pair of white air force ones for yourself i'm sure some stylists do that but to run up over fifty thousand is just absolutely insane it continues here what's the next screenshot another screenshot here yep it says here at carissa walker it's more i just wanted to show y'all what her reply was when she got caught that was just one receipt I paid 50k, I said 50k, but she's still waiting on more receipts. She ran up 15k in LV alone on herself. Jesus Christ. And of course, people are wondering, well, who does, what does this girl actually look like that was um, styling this person? And why would she do this? And then there's a picture of the actual girl herself, Carisha Walker. I think she's gone ahead and deleted a few of these as well for Instagram. So bless her in that regard. Again, I don't get any satisfaction for this, but she does dress pretty terribly from what we can see here so far right obviously a very good looking girl um keeps herself fit and stuff but that's no excuse for the clothes she puts on because usually the adage goes if you're in good shape and you're you know a good looking person it's pretty hard to dress badly right but then when you do dress badly and you've got the body to not dress badly it does show probably more than it would to anybody else and this is just diabolical she's got these high heels on that don't go with anything that she's wearing these um knee pads with a smiley face on them i don't know again there's probably a lot of crude jokes involved there denim hot pants with the pockets poking out which has enough correlation to anything she's wearing and then uh, you know a crop sweatsuit with the um smiley print on the elbows i'm sure it's not capital whatever it is that's probably not prps uh booty shorts but wherever it is she just looks terrible and then i learned recently on social media that allegedly what some of these rappers are doing and these entertainers is that they're purposely hiring pretty good looking girls who kind of moonlight as stylists you know the ones i say oh, i'm a photographer right um in order to kind of of course have somebody cute next to them mm. and also give them the option if they need to to kind of go out and f you know and frolic the midnight hours with their assistant their photographer and their stylist i didn't know that's a thing so people are basically saying it's dj muscle's fault right which it always is right it always comes back to the man's fault right even though this woman basically stole money from him um he kind of you know gave her a chance which he basically said if you listen or if you agree or if you believe what he said in his statement he believed in her probably paid her more than she was actually worth because he wanted to make sure she was happy in her job and then she went and stabbed him in the back by buying a bunch of things that are probably not going to be worth that much when you haven't got the ability to make more money that's the issue once you start stealing stuff like this there's no real going back you don't suddenly turn into a humble live by your means type person she's probably been living a fancy a fantasy a fanciful life right in some respects for a very very long time and it's finally starting to catch up with her which is why you should always live within your means especially when you don't have uh many means or especially when you're working within an industry where people talk a lot and i'd imagine you know her name's probably completely solid now off the back of this the good thing i guess if you're dj master is that this also has opportunity for other people to come up and just say hey you're giving this girl 6k i'll do it for free right i'll do it for two i'll do it for 1k per month and i'll completely kill it and i'll do the stylist job on top of it for free just to show you that i'm about this life so it's obviously a negative for him now because he's lost out a lot of money but i think long term he's definitely going to find a better stylist all in because he's gone through this experience but yeah big up um carissa is it her name Hey, spell name carissa c walker um hold your head up as per usual it's going to be a bit bleak for you you know usual stuff with cancel culture and stuff online you've obviously she obviously did it herself so she can't blame cancel culture but in terms of people getting outraged it shall pass by next week people forget you even exist and then you can continue working and doing your thing but this is a big blow especially in terms of reputational damage and that's done because i don't know where else she's going to be personal shopping for people so it might kind of completely eradicate her chances of going back on you know working that field but you know how men are in it someone's gonna see her damsel in distress and want to save her so she'll probably be okay she'll probably be okay we move on we move we move we move we have an interesting update here courtesy of the guardian regarding that failed not failed fabled actually um 
lauded in some circles and also derided Bottega Veneta party that took place at Bergheim and with the after party taking place at Soho House. People were not happy, right? Not happy in the slightest with seeing uh, Bottega Veneta put on a invite only work party quote unquote which is how they got around it in order to you know showcase their presentation and the after party took place in Soho House and then allegedly if you believe the screenshots and some of the messages that are being sent to people um anonymously they've been having you know after hours in Soho House for a very long time it's been kind of a bit of an open secret which you know makes complete sense um that the elites in countries all over the world are basically doing whatever they want to do during a global lockdown when people aren't able to even go and buy you know underwear in shops and stuff here they are partying away with no mask on and enjoying themselves but like i mentioned in my other video i thought this was something i'll just kind of you know fly by the night people forget about it next week but again, considering how bleak the situation is in Germany, it appears like the Berlin police are investigating it for a breach of COVID rules. So it's courtesy of Guardian, it says the following. Berlin police are investigating a possible breach of social distancing rules at an illegal star-studded party said to have been held at a luxury fashion label Bottega Veneta. After leaked footage, apparently... Um, of the event inside the private members club in Soho caused outrage in a city whose cherished nightlife has been on hold for ordinary clubbers for over a year that's true you know for over a year you haven't been able to go to a nightclub because imagine all those videos that we saw in the summer <clears throat> of people going to like else and whatever it may be um, they were all open air parties basically right um, everything else in terms of it being in an actual nightclub was completely gone shuttered and this is in a city where you know the beating heart of it is nightclubs so for that entire industry to be completely shuttered and then to have a you know a very luxury fashion house come in or fashion label come in and put on a party um for their select guest and then kind of do it behind closed doors and you know try and get away that way it definitely gonna it's gonna rub you up the wrong way it continues a presentation of the Italian fashion labels um, latest connection at Berlin's famous and exclusive Bergheim nightclub last Friday was reportedly attended by a host of celebrity guests, including Nigerian singer Burner Boy. Interesting too, there's not been a lot of outrage towards Bergheim, right? Which makes sense. People are probably worried about getting in and they want to make sure they kind of um, seek favor with the people involved because you never know who's watching. But that's interesting though, isn't it? Everyone's got morals, everyone's got ethics, but when it comes to criticizing Bergheim for even allowing this event to take place in their building, which, you know, they could argue it's no different than doing the art gallery that they had hosted in there. I don't really show the technicalities around it, but still, if we continue. Um, Grammy Award winner Burner Boy later that evening posted a video on Instagram that apparently showed him dancing behind the turntables inside a crowded restaurant in the seventh floor of the Soho House branch, which Bottega Veneta had booked for an exclusive use of. Um, for use to use two weeks prior to fashion show. Interesting, they haven't mentioned Virgil's name on there. I don't know why that is, but um, he was obviously DJing while I was Burner Boy was dancing. So it, was this all Burner Boy's fault? Burner Boy got too excited and went to share himself dancing to um, the Virgil playing Fela Kuti or something. Is that why? What caused this whole thing? Uh, Burner Boy's um, inability to put down his phone and just enjoy the party that he's been flown over to to enjoy for free. Like, God damn it. He continues in the video, which was later deleted by a scene by Guardian. None of the party girls are seen wearing a mask. Of course not. Um, a spokesperson for the Berlin police force said, I yeah, received an emergency call at 2.45 a.m. on a Saturday morning complaining about the noise from the within the venue, uh, wherever that place is. Uh, how did you say that? Would you say that's Tortraza, right? Venue on Tortraza, one of Germany's, sorry, one of the British group's global network of 31 clubs that open only to members and their guests. So oh, all the Soho houses, it's so sure this house is open right now. Is that all people are trying to tell me? madness it continues we're currently viewing a footage of the event with a view of possible preliminary proceedings for a breach of measures against coronavirus spokesperson said under the current rules gatherings between more than two people are banned between 9 p.m and 5 a.m hotels are allowed to host business travels but must abide by social distancing rules travelers entering germany from listed of the designated high risk areas which include the u.s u.s and the uk oh man it's gonna click it isn't it nope stop there Oop, let's go back and the uk 
bish, 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 bosh. A spokesperson for Soho House Group confirmed that it was looking into a spontaneous party at its venue on Friday and said it was a later closed down by the management. The spokesperson said the safety of our staff and guests and wider community is our utmost priority. The recent business booking, which occupied all rooms in Soho House, was made in accordance with the government guidance. Bruv, they booked out every single room in Soho House in Berlin. Which, you know, if you've seen it, it's pretty big. It's this here, right? It's like every other, you know, these places that you go around the world, these different group places. But there's a lot of rooms in these places. A lot of rooms. Function rooms, meeting rooms. So to them to book out the entire thing, they got money, bro. It continues. We're aware of the possible break of social distancing rules. When guests returned um, to the hotel, we, we we take this very seriously and we're working with everybody involved to find out what happened. Some members of Soha staff questioned whether the party was spontaneous. They said they had already a huge sound system installed before the party. The rumours are going around at the house that Skepta was going to perform, one employee said. But Tega Vanetta had not responded for comment. It's interesting too they're not responding because this has just come after um, that flipping dog awful uh, article or interview with, uh, what do you call it? Daniel Lee, the creative director of Bottega Veneta, where he said the following, um, social media represents a homogenization of culture. Um, everyone sees the same um, stream of content. A huge amount of thought goes into what I do and social media oversimplifies it. So anti, would you say Daniel Lee is probably anti-vax? I won't say it's anti-vax. It's probably fair to say that Daniel Lee probably doesn't think the virus is a big deal, right? He probably thinks because he's young and he's virile and he makes core boots, right that probably the virus won't affect him too tough so he's like you know what sod it um and then everyone else around him because he's got the it brand at the moment they're just gonna be what they're gonna be um open to just going there because they want to be associated next to the brand they want to be a clout and stuff and you've got all these accounts that are uploading images let's see here this is the account what's it called Bottega Veneto Veneteno maybe you pronounce that it doesn't matter oh Venet no okay cool I get it um, where they're saying a story, they've got some images and videos of people going crazy at the bar. He's got it, nothing. Oh, it's like I'm not alone. It's not going to load. What happened? Did the, did the account get blocked? Oh, it's gone. The account's got shut down. Uh oh. That account had all the images. You see that? The account's gone now. Okay, cool. That account got shut down. Crazy. Okay, interesting. They shut that account down. Crazy. Bottega coming in with clutch, mate. Let's see what they probably have updated anything. Wow. Okay, cool. Well, that's been shut down by that account crazy so in the end what will happen nothing probably nothing will change um everyone will go back to regular scheduled programming but they're going to come out with a statement they'll probably donate something to a covid relief fund or something undisclosed um daniel lee will go on pretending like this didn't happen you'll know interviews and you know they'll keep posting on that journal website thing that isn't a blog that looks like a blog um because you know that's basically where we're at that's basically where we're at but that's wild man that um that page is gone now that page where everyone was uploading the pictures and the videos and stuff is completely gone it got taken down i wonder if if Bottega were able to how do they how would they have taken that down i guess they could have said it's a copyright thing or whatever but yeah they took down the video crazy yeah i don't have any of them i saved a couple of them on my thing and they're all gone now. okay there's one guy he's still got a few but the other ones are gone that is insane. Okay, this guy still got a few of the pictures up on there and his thing. But yeah, the other ones are all completely gone. Madness, isn't it? They completely got rid of the entire thing. Fuck me. That's the power these brands have, isn't it? They can just completely come in and just say, you know what? Nope. No more. We're not having you talking about my brand anymore, mate. Let's see if this girl posts anything. This girl's been going in. This girl's name? Brenda Hashtag. She's been really aggressive in terms of posting updates concerning this whole thing. Let's see what she said. Da, 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 go for a story. Officer made a mistake. The social justice stuff. Okay, I think she's kind of pulled off from this, it looks like. Okay. Cool, man. There we have it. There we have it. How much time do have I used already here? Let me see if I've not kind of overstayed my welcome. Okay, let's continue. What else do we have to talk about here? We've spoken about that. We've spoken about that. Duh, duh, duh. Duh, duh, duh. We've spoken about that. Oh, yeah, this is a good, a good one. Update just in terms of stuff going forward. So um, it looks like one of my favourite venues in East London, Mixed Garage, is gone. Um, it's now been replaced by another uh, venue called 
Goal Color Garden. God, what am I talking about? My lips. Color Garden has now um, taken over from the space formerly known as no, what am I talking about? Color Factory. Sorry, Color Factory has taken over from the space formerly known as Mixed Garage, with also an outdoor space called the Color Garden. Interesting, because um, I guess during lockdown, I kind of just assumed no, sorry, before lockdown, they put out a statement about oh, we're gonna. Um, you know, uh, go back to the drawing board, blah, 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 what everyone else was doing, when everyone's closed. But they didn't really announce that they were going to leave that space completely. I just thought they were just going to close down and when everything reopens, they'd reopen. But, you know, one of the casualties, unfortunately, has been a place that I um, frolicked a lot of times, um, many, many times on the weekend. I'll just jump between the yard and mix and then maybe go to some other nondescript places. But one of my favorite venues, Easy in Hackney Wick, um, really good sound system, really good location. I basically walk there um, and just, you know, generally good people that kind of vibe there. Bouncers are pretty safe as well. Everything's just really cool. And then, of course, in Mix, they had that night that I went to for a lot. Um, Origins. I think the first Origins that I went to might have been 2018 back there. I think it might have been Panago or someone playing. Um, so that was a pretty decent <coughs> event to attend. And usually they had you know great p promoters putting some decent nights we got to see tricks playing there uh, like a little innovision label showcasey kind of thing um plenty of things obviously i went to go see um what's that uh, uh pussy palace party those are always pretty cool um loads of great stuff but yeah a whole new chapter is now going to be written going forward with color factories is courtesy of ra it says the 300 capacity area will host weekly seated events <coughs> oops sorry my bad from this friday coming forward it says the following young east london venue color factory is opening a new outdoor area uh, on the same site formerly mixed garage the multi-purpose spot sits in queen's yard hackney wick though the indoor space can't open up until at least june 20 21st in accordance with the uh, current covid regulations warm-up events will run from next friday april 16th at color the venues um 300 capacity outdoor area which is pretty sick in it to have an outdoor capacity of 300 that people can kind of rave and dance to it's going to be a vibe especially with the good weather in the summer she said come continues a two-month program has been revealed with dj slots for debonair ok williams alexander nutt sakaria sound Flo deal andrew ashong james messiah big up errol um iconica and more color garden has been fitted with a martin audio system sound system so it continues says here yeah, we are only a we are the only large black owned music venue in london is that? i didn't know that says director nathaniel williams that's pretty sick we are committed to representing and reflecting the diverse community of london so every single one of our in-house liners will always incorporate at least one person of color and will always be mixed gender that is sick i didn't even clock that actually that's actually quite cool that they do stuff like that where you don't actually realize that they've kind of inserted um you know representation to it and they've not made it a thing it just happens because the people that are running it kind of want to offer something a bit different to the you know current lineups that exist out there um in the in the clubbing space this is pretty sick man really really cool i didn't even notice that let's continue as of monday the 12th of april pubs bars and restaurants can serve food and drinks outdoors guests might be seated with no more than six people two households per table this is stage two of the roadmap but yeah look at that they've got these sick little um art directed art directed posters they put together the creative the creative direction sorry or the artwork or the creative for the posters is pretty sick it looks like a vhs cover um or like a cassette cover sort of vibe april may you've got obviously all the djs there listed in alphabetical order more to come and yeah some good dates here all listed so yeah back to back weekends friday saturday friday saturday friday saturday friday saturday what's the most heavily attended one so far they've got here uh okay williams and uh flo dilly and somebody called aham how do you pronounce that would you say is i had a, i had a i had a dream oh that's sick that's a cool name i had a dream cool so i had a dream is playing saturday 17th of april 2021 sick lineup man and the prices for the tickets are 90 pounds for a table of six which is pretty decent all things considered yeah sick man great food is that all different vendors that are doing the food chickenish holy smoked burger kamaliki the the hogless roast and vegan ushi. that's pretty sick they've all gonna have their own little sections that you can eat at. and then the times for it's opening as well are pretty decent as well 
um, 8.30 to 2.30 a.m. So you get a you know, chance to get some dinner, have a little bit of a dance and a boogie, um, catch some people spinning, and then, of course, head off home because there's good connections in terms of trains and stuff in that area as well with the Everground and whatnot. And, of course, you know, you can always get an Uber back. So, yeah, definitely check out the Colour Garden at the Colour Factory, formerly Mixed Garage. Again, one of my favourite spots to go to and um yeah good luck to them with the programming i like that program i like the idea behind um having it be representative because that's the one thing about london that can be a little bit annoying especially for myself being a a somewhat lower tier dj right it can be difficult to get in to play in these kind of places because mostly you know they've got their own little contacts of people that they kind of want to play there in general and also it feels like sometimes the middle tier djs who probably don't play enough as they don't who probably don't play often as they should are usually fighting for the same spots that I'm trying to get. So then you end up in a position where you're trying to get those guys to play who are really good, those guys and girls, and then they can't play. And then you've got a whole host of people like myself who are, can't play either. And it's a complete, you know, nonsense. And then what's up happening is that you end up having the same old people playing in all the same places, weekend in, weekend out, which, you know, of course you don't begrudge them because everyone needs gigs, everyone needs to practice in front of people because much like stand-up comedy, DJing you have to do it in front of people you can practice as much as you want in your bedroom but unless you get in front of people and you actually get to read a crowd and is that person actually looking at the camera yeah you can see that yeah they are <laughs> um unless uh, unless you get a chance yeah you can see it in there there you go look <laughs> unless you get the chance to actually be in front of people and um and actually read a crowd and see what people like and clear floor and then bring them back on a the dance floor you know carry them through peak set closing set opening set whatever you need to learn to do that in real time so you know i don't begrudge middle tier djs for going out there and trying to hunt for these 300 500 capacity places and trying to get as many gigs as they can and you know given if they can't play then getting their friends to play at the same place to kind of keep all the gigs in house because it's a real um what, what they what the tim didn't say it's a real knife fire there for gigs when it comes to clubs it's a real knife fire everyone is basically fighting for the same five to ten spots to play at um the same promoters are kind of you know playing everybody off against each other and you end up with a pretty toxic scene for some time for in some occasions not all the cases, but sometimes so it's good to see them taking a pretty fresh approach to things and be like no we're gonna take a bit different gendered um have a bit more representative of london overall so it just sounds different i've always said whenever you go to a club and you actually you notice the vibe you're feeling inside when there's actually somebody playing on the decks that isn't a guy right it just feels different i don't know how to describe it but it just is the fact of the matter i remember towards the end of my time doing nights i tried to you know book a few of my girlfriends who were djing at the time but it definitely does help it definitely does help to mix things up a little bit to see you know different people on the dance floor as well you don't always just want to make it into like a pirate studio sessions every time you put on a night you know i mean just using you your friends flipping going crazy over the same tunes that you played them yesterday in your bedroom and you want to mix up a little make it a bit different so yeah good to see um color factory doing that and then uh, yeah uh, attend attend the color factory and go to the color garden it's not mix anymore again many memories gone man from mix man mix just if i remember correctly they just replaced or they just changed the toilets as well they made the toilets like non-gen non-gendered so you everyone kind of goes in at once it's great of course if you're clubbing i guess if you're not it can get a bit weird but if you're clubbing and you're usually drunk or high you probably don't notice but yeah they just fixed the toilets it was a pretty decent venue but hey you know things need to change things need to change what else we got here let's move on if we're talking about the color factory buh, 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 buh. we've spoken about Bottega Veneta update haven't we yeah I think that might be it you know I think that might be it what time are we at now already what time are we at I think that might be it yeah we're already at 57 anyway. yeah that might be it for now so what else is going to come for me? Okay, so yeah, um, I've got a bonus episode, obviously, of the Excellent Singer Show coming up. So make sure if you're not subscribed to the Patreon, you jump on there. I'll be talking about a few more racier subjects on there. Talking about, obviously, the Trisha Paytas versus Joe Rogan thing, which is complete nonsense. 
Um, I'm going over some other things as well. What else I got in there? I think that might be the main thing actually, the Trisha Paytas and Joe Rogan thing, because obviously I got some views on that that I want to share. But you know, try and keep that behind the paywall because my views may not be the most politically correct when it comes to that sort of thing. So definitely tune in at patreon.com for just Agostino. If you're not subscribed already, to get involved for less one dollar one pound per month you get um one bonus episode of the excellent single show per week minimum on the patreon so make sure you jump there and get involved um i've got a couple on there a few actually i got four or five on there already so make sure you jump on there get involved don't delay excellent single show on the patreon for extra little bonus that'll be a good vibe and then of course united are playing what granada second leg of the europa league that's going to be fun, right? After seeing, you know, all these incredible Champions League matches yesterday and today, you know, today was what Liverpool getting knocked out by Real Madrid. Um, Man City ended up scraping or no winning actually 2-1 away from home at Dortmund to go through as well to the semi-final. So, you know, clearly seeing so the top echelons of, you know, European football heavyweights uh, going at it toe to toe, blow for blow and doing what they're doing. And then us playing flipping little old Granada, at home or you're gonna show talking about the seats being too red and stuff like you just couldn't make it up in it you really couldn't make it up it's a complete shit show but hey man you have to move in it we do what we do we live what we live it's a flipping crazy time to be a united fan but maybe this is going to be the test that we all needed in order to kind of really solidify our fandom and how much of a fan are you really are you willing to stay the course and see the club through thick and thin and this is thick and thin Thick and thin is this, having us playing diabolical football but still winning, have us playing horrible football but still going through um, certain competitions, not all, because, you know, FA Cup, Champions League, we got told to skedaddle and League Cup as well, but somehow we managed to kind of keep our head above water when it comes to the Europa League. I don't know how, don't ask me how he does it, especially, but he just manages to figure it out all the time. And um, yeah, man, that's where we are, isn't it? That's where we are. United, United, United we keep on going we keep on going and then yeah that's about it for me for now so again thanks for tuning in it's been a pleasure to have your company if it's your first time checking out the youtube you know what to do smash that like button hit subscribe leave me a comment down below and of course if you're listening via the podcast that please leave me a five star review and share the show with your friends that would be much appreciated and i'll see you guys again on the other side for now take care be safe peace